out. You pick this property up for thirty nine nine. You ride these suckers out because at thirty nine nine, them paying nine and a quarter, it's still gonna cash flow. Just based upon the fact that this particular tenant, at least one of the two roommates on his own lease, has a cane fathead in the middle of their front yard. I can only conclude that this tenant is dope as hell. Standard uh, couch standing on its side in the like pantry closet type area. Uh, and at that point, you should be able to get a CMHA tenant in there paying $1,400. Welcome to the Investment Properties for Sales show, folks. Thing is selling at or above list. We are going to provide you guys with complete transparency and education. We take you to the video tour. Won't watch TV. Giving it to you straight. When you got properties that are super duper cheap, uh, but can rent for a ton of money, that's usually a very good sign. Uh, that should be like a red flag, an alert in your head uh, that they are in a high crime, uh, sketchy type neighborhood, okay? That's first and foremost, right? That's exactly what we have going on today. The property is 9814 Miles Ave, Cleveland 44105. Now, this particular neighborhood, folks, if you look at the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, I have given this neighborhood uh, an F grade. It's either a D or an F. I can't remember. It's kind of ebbs and flows over there, right? Uh, this is very much a high crime difficult neighborhood in Cleveland. And the pros to investing in neighborhoods like that are you can pick up properties for pennies on the dollar and get a ton of rent. The cons, though, is you deal with a lot of crime in the neighborhood, and it's usually pretty hard to get a good tenant. Now, this particular tenant, uh, there's two tenants, and the particular owner decided to like rent, rent out their house to them like each on like their own roommate agreement. So each tenant has their own lease, which as professional landlord guys, you should never do that. Uh, that is just not the appropriate way to do it. You have to do one lease for everybody that lives in the house. When all the rent is paid, everybody's cool. When all the rent isn't paid, everybody gets evicted. That way you don't have somebody being like, well, Billy didn't pay his share, but I paid my share. As a landlord, it's not our job to deal with that, right? But that's neither here nor there. The fact that the particular seller that is selling this property didn't manage it professionally is why people like us, people like me, people like you at home are able to, to buy properties for pennies on the dollar, right? Where other people are imperfectly running their business, we could come in, swoop in, take advantage, uh, and make money, right? So what we have is a property in a sketchy neighborhood uh, with a kind of a bogus lease agreement, right? Uh, that leads us to get really, really cheap properties. And, and the big fallback here is this neighborhood is in a sketchy neighborhood, or the property rather is in a sketchy neighborhood where it becomes hard to, to get good tenants. However, just based upon the fact that this particular tenant, at least one of the two roommates on his own lease, has a cane fathead in the middle of their front yard. I can only conclude that this tenant is dope as hell, yo. So he's probably badass. Is he living in squalor? You betcha. Outside of the uh, animal, Triple H, and Ultimate Warrior fatheads in his bedroom there, uh, the rest of the house looks like complete crap, right? So uh, he's probably dope, though, because, again, big-time wrestling fan. Like, if you're going to, like, legit let the neighborhood know you're down with Kane, like, in your front yard like that, you're probably a good hang. I mean, I might want to drink some beers with this guy. That... Notwithstanding, the house is pretty sketchy, and him and his roommate are not paying enough rent, right? They're only paying nine and a quarter uh, with a particular property like this, guys, because it's so massive. This is a seven-bedroom, three-bathroom house. You can get Section 8 tenants in here at 1400 right? And that's where it goes back to you got a sketchy neighborhood. Uh, it becomes really hard to get quality tenants. These two dudes have been in there for quite some time, and again, uh, they're probably cool dudes, so I would not move to evict them. Uh, would I be you and acquire this particular property, right? 39 is the ask. Nine and a quarter is what these guys are paying. What you want to do, folks, is ride these two wrestling fans out. Well, at least one of them is a wrestling fan. By the way, it's really cool that Kane's in the front yard because, you know, as I talk to you guys, it's like Monday, March 15th or 16th, 2023. Legit just watched the Kane biography on A&E last night. It was dope. By the way, Glenn Jacobs who played Kane, is the mayor of Knox County, Tennessee, man. Go, go Glenn. Go Glenn. But back to business. What we need to understand is that these two dudes, uh, they're paying nine and a quarter. The price is only $39.9. you are in a sketchy neighborhood. The house kind of looks like shit, okay? You don't want to kick them out 
you don't want to be like, yo, I can increase my rent by $475 a month if I go Section 8, which you absolutely can. But what you have to understand is, folks, you're in a sketchy neighborhood. Getting cash-paying tenants that actually pay their rent like these two dudes do is a task in and of itself. This landlord, even though they did it incorrectly, they did it with like a roommate lease, has already managed to do that. So what the smart play here is, is you ride these two dudes out, okay? You ride these guys out. You pick this property up for $39.9. You ride these suckers out because at $39.9, them paying nine and a quarter, it's still going to cash flow. The moment they either don't pay rent uh, and you evict them or they decide to move out on their own, that time you then need to send in your crew, renovate the property, get it lead certified, get it Section 8 ready to roll. Uh, and at that point, you should be able to get a CMHA tenant and they're paying 1400 For those not in the know, CMHA is the housing authority out here. Like everybody, like all across the USA, right? Every, 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 every like city and, and county and state, they all got Section 8. Uh, but Section 8 is ran by housing authorities in each individual area, right? CMHA is the housing authority that's going to handle Section 8 out here, right? So the end goal, folks, is to get 1400 on a Section 8 tenant because the odds of getting two dope wrestling fans in here the next time are probably pretty low, right? When you're in a sketchy neighborhood, the odds of getting badass tenants uh, is few and far between, right? It doesn't happen that often. That's the big risk. That's why you get the property so cheap, right? So what we do is we utilize Section 8, which is the cheat code to investing in sketchy neighborhoods. When you utilize Section 8, you guarantee that $1,400 in rent gets paid because for all the problems the government has, one of those problems is not making their monthly rent check to us landlords. The government, they do a lot of stuff wrong, folks, but they pay every single month not on the first. They pay on the third, but hey, they're the government. You can't really force them to pay on the first like you pay the other tenants, like you make the other tenants pay on the first. But that's okay. The third's cool with me, right? So the government will pay. That's going to be your safety line, your safety plan in the future going forward. But for now, again, like I said, I'd ride these two dudes out, maybe even kick them some $50 to $100 uh, rental increases. Uh, over the next couple years, but you don't want to be in a rush to create that turnover to get that 1400 in rent because that 1400 in rent is going to come with a hefty price tag, right? Because, again, I cannot stress this enough. The house... I mean, that looks like shit, right? You're going to have to do a full renovation on the inside. Like, you know, you got your standard uh, couch standing on its side in the, like, pantry closet type area. Like, I don't know what's going on with this, right? So whatever you don't want to do is be in a hurry, to drop a bunch of money, right? Just just take the $39,000 investment with the 925 in rent and ride that as long as you possibly can. Then you do your big old rehab. Then you get Section 8 in there, and then you collect those buku, buku bucks, $1,400 a month in rent, folks. If this makes sense for you, if you think you have what it takes to manage properties in neighborhoods like this or you have your own property management team, if you think this is the investment that is right for you, send my team an email, sales at holdenwise.com. If you want to pay cash, include your proof of funds, just send us an email. Hey, man, want to buy this house? Kane's dope. Love Tombstone Pile Drivers. I want to offer 40K. Here's my proof of funds, JYs. Let's rock and roll Section 8 for life, right? For life. This is NWL reference. Anyway, that's how you would do that. If you want to finance it, normally we have no issues taking financing. This house is a little rough for the wear, so I, I really don't think a traditional lender is going to be able to put this one together. Uh, possibly private money or hard money loans. Those could work. Same deal. Just send your offer, sales at holdenwise.com. Let us know you're using a private money or hard money lender. Include the pre-approval letter for that. And uh, if you have your own real estate agent and they want to submit the offer for you, that's cool too. They can do so. Information on how they will do that is going to be in the MLS. If you talk to them and for some reason they can't figure out how to navigate the MLS, and they're not sure how they submit the offer to us, uh, I would tell you your real estate agent's probably a complete idiot, and you should probably get a better real estate agent or just submit the offer directly to us at sales at holtonwise.com. Let's go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.